In this tutorial, I will show you how we can use generic parameters for your class. Especially, I'm going to show you a bad version first without using the generic parameter and show you what kind of errors you can actually uh, make, what kind of mistakes you can make that will occur at the runtime. However, if you actually adapt the, the class, the bad version, by using a generic, generic parameter, you will be able to find out the errors at a compile time. So you should really be able to, by the, by the end of this tutorial, you should be, able, should be able to tell what's really the advantages for using generic parameter for your class. Okay, so the questions is already available to you. So let me uh, just review that very quickly. So we are actually going to implement a book by designing an Eiffel class for that. So a book is actually for storing people's records for example, like a telephone book, in which case the uh, records are telephone numbers, or a birthday book where records are birthdays of people, or an address book where uh, the records are addresses. And each book should be indexed by people's names. So which means we are now making the assumption that people's, name, people's names are unique. And of course, you might change your application to maybe it is indexed by a social interest number, in which case it's really unique. But for the purpose of this example, we're going to we're going to assume all people's names are unique. Okay, so we are going to create a class book which will support the following features. And by and the at the end of the mention of the features, this is a question for you. So you should be able to tell just by Looking at the functionality that are supposed to be provided, you should be able to tell which features should be supported as commands and which features should be supported as queries. And remember, in the last lecture in the class, we actually talked about the principle of command query separation. If you uh, actually are not sure about this uh, principle, please refer back to the slides. Briefly speaking, the command query separation principle is whenever you see a feature that has no return type, has no return value, then that feature should be considered as a command. On the other hand, if a feature has a return type in IFO, then it should be considered as a query. So now the command query separation principle is as follows. For every query, it should have no side effects to the system states. For example, let's say in your bank account class, the balance feature is actually a query because it has uh, only just uh, it has the return type. And in, in that case, you should never expect calling the balance would actually at the same time maybe change the uh, credit or change the balance of the underlying system states. So now on the other hand, let's say for the commands, for example, the uh, uh, in the bank account, let's say deposit and withdraw. And for those features, they are commands because they have no return types, then you would expect them to do the uh, uh, expected system updates to the credits or to the balance. And of course, you have to capture the corresponding uh, expected state updates as the post conditions for those features. And we have covered them already in the previous tutorial videos. Okay, so now for the book class, First of all, we're going to maintain a collection of records, which can be of any type. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the any type from IFO, because in IFO, the whole class hierarchy, always the top one is the any type. So this is like in the case of Java, object class is the uh, top one for the class hierarchy. And later on, so for the implementation, so because the, the intention is to maintain a collection of records, but how you actually implement this collection, you actually have more than one ways to do it. So here I just mentioned a few. So here I said, you can, you can I suggest four possible ways for you to implement the collection. You're supposed to try all of them for your practice. In this tutorial, I'm only going to show you one of them. So one way is to use a hash table in from IFO library where you have to use a key and a value for the hash table. You're supposed to look at the API 
for hash table yourself. Or the ones we are going to show in this video is for using two arrays. So ba the basic idea is set here. So let's say, so basically you want to store two arrays. So one for the list of names, for people's names, and the other array for the list of uh, people's records, let's say for birthday. Then for the two arrays, you have to make sure at each corresponding positions in the two arrays, they should correspond to the name and its associated record. For example, if you talk about the name, people's name, in position two of the names array, then if you go to the same position in the records array, then that should refer to the record that as, that's associated with the name in names two. Okay, so this implementation is not difficult, so please try to do that, but we'll actually try to do this uh, in this tutorial. And similarly, if you can also try to use two linked lists to uh, implement your collection. So this is something you should try beyond this tutorial. Or what you can do is similar to the idea of the transaction class in our previous tutorial series, Remember in the bank account class, we actually use the class transaction to encapsulate the idea of the dates and the value for the deposit or withdrawal that's done with the particular dates. And the record idea here is similar. So here we are trying to encapsulate each pair of the name and its associated record data. Okay, so these are the four possible implementations. Of course, you can think of more if you like, but at least try these four to to see a uh, uh, to make sure regardless of which implementation you are trying where you're trying to implement the functionalities you provide should be consistent they should make no difference functionality wise to the potential clients which means all the test cases should pass uh, when you switch from one implementation to another so here are some questions for you later on but one of them was so when you actually switch from one implementation to another, so how do you, so how can you be sure that the implementation change would not affect the potential clients? So you should know this by applying the uh, information hiding principle. So this is a very very important exercise for you to do. Please uh, try to do that both conceptually and also try to do that in iPhone. Okay. So now let's go over the features that we're going to have. So what we have covered so far is how you can implement the collection of records by using four, one of the four possible implementations. And for this tutorial, we're going to use two arrays. So we're going to support different features here. And you're supposed to know whether they should be query or command. The first feature is to know if I give you a particular, uh, give a particular name, you can tell me whether that particular name exists in the collection or not, in the book or not. And similarly, if I give you a particular record, uh, you should tell me whether that record actually exists in the uh, book or not. And we have a feature called add, and this will actually add a new person and their associated record uh, into the book. And we are supposed to remove a person's name and his and their associated record from the book, okay? Given that the person exists in the book. And we also have a find feature that will actually find all the people who happen to have the same record. For example, let's say if now we are storing birthdays into the book, then given a, uh, given a particular birthday, let's say today, we want to find out all the people who were born today. And symmetrically, we also want to support a feature where uh, the get uh, the get feature would say given some uh, given a, a name of a person, if the person exists, we want to return their associated record. Okay. So also you're supposed to also come up with yourself about what should be the what should be the relevant what should be the appropriate uh, pre and post conditions and class invariants for the book and for each of the features. I might mention some of them uh, in the tutorial, but you're supposed to also make sure your development is complete as far as the contracts are concerned. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and do it uh, for this exercise. So as usual, let's uh, open up your terminal 
and go to your workspace and launch the current version of your iPhone Studio because now it's summer 2015 so we're going to use 1501 and we're going to wait for iPhone Studio to appear and then we're going to create a brand new project the basic application here so we'll say create and we'll say bank projects and of course you have to make sure this is actually in the right location so I want to go to my home directory 3311 and I want to sort it there I want to make sure it actually uh, specify also correctly the location so it will be bank projects uh, should be book project actually that's uh, apparently a typo book projects okay home directory 3311 workspace and book projects okay let's compile that and also as I said in the previous tutorial series you should also modify your file system to make sure that you can create symbolic links for the uh, uh, directories so now we want the root directory and we always want a directory for tests and we also want a directory for let's say the business logic in this case it will be book okay and we're going to drag and drop the application class which will be the root into sorry should not be here we should drag and drop the uh, application class into the root directory and then now let's go to projects and project settings so we're going to do multiple things at one go so first we're going to add a library of the testing for the last testing so right click and say add library and here type e-spec standing for iPhone specification click on that and make sure it is the uh, voice safe version that should be selected and say OK and now we're going to create symbolic links let's delete the default one uh, which is called a book project that refers to the current directory that's not the one we want so just delete that delete deleting this symbolic link would not delete the directory at your file system so don't worry click on that and click on the remove mark here and say yes okay so now we don't have any clusters anymore so let's now click on the groups and say add cluster so we want to add a root cluster current directory and root remember this is a relative path you don't you should never specify absolute path for your uh, for your clusters okay we have the root right click and we should specify for the business logic which is the uh, book uh, directory and then we should also specify also add a cluster for the tests so that should be in this path just like before and now we also want to make sure we have the voice safety uh, turned on so if you click on here tar uh, target here and then go to voice safety here and then say voice safety select to be complete and here for the syntax select standard syntax for the iPhone okay always make sure you do this step ever before you start developing your software okay now it compiles so now we are going to first going to create a class in our business logic cluster right click on the book cluster and then say new class and we are going to say uh, book and say creates okay so here I'm going to skip the part for the uh, class header here but you're, you're expected to write this documentation yourself I'm only going to put my name here just to give myself credits but for the description you are supposed to write an informative description for anyone who is going to read your code including yourself that's a very important practice okay first of all we are going to now start coding uh, the book so we're going to try to code a li as little implementation as possible only if only if it is necessary and then we're going to do the contracts and then we're going to do test cases so first of all we're going to declare that we're going to have a make feature that will be used as a constructor for the class and we have a feature clause and that will be for constructor and here we'll say make and that's going to initialize and 
empty book. Okay. And here we're going to let me make the indentation better. Okay. So now if we simply compile, it will compile. So now we gotta de uh, decide what attributes we should have for the uh, uh, this book. So because I mentioned before, we are going to use the uh, two arrays implementation. So if you if you refer back to your question sheet, look at how I describe about the implementations and do that accordingly. But I'm going to do that now for you. So we can say implementation here. And we're going to have one array. And we got to say it's array of uh, name. We're going to use string to represent a name. And also we're going to have dates. Uh, no, sorry, records. Because records can be birthday, can be address, can be uh, phone number, can be anything. Okay, so because it can be anything, so we'll say array of any. Okay. And if we simply try to compile here, it's going to say variable is not properly set. And as I mentioned for many times so far, this has to do, has to do with voice safety. Remember, in a project setting, we already turned the voice safety option, option to be complete. So it is complaining that the attributes, records, and names might have the value of void because we have not explicitly uh, initialized them. So what we should do, so if you read through the message, you have to make sure you have to go to the uh, constructor. So here, if you read the message carefully, they said ensure the variable is properly set by the corresponding setter instruction. So here, the setter instruction talks about two categories of features. One is the constructor, which is the case for the make feature. And the second category of features is any commands that might modify your states. You've got to make sure you never assign them to void. Okay, so we're going to create and names dot. So if I say dot, it's going to give me all the possible constructors in the array class. We're going to say make empty, so that should be reasonable. So we should say create records dot make empty. And what should be the post condition for this? And the post condition for this should be that, so this is implementation. So now this is suppliers secrets. So now we want to say, what should be the guarantee to the clients whenever they call this make feature, what can they expect the services, services to be provided by the make feature? So of course we, so we can say uh, empty name list initially, so always, always remember to put a tag. So it would be a name followed by colon to make sure if any of the pre or post conditions uh, got violated at the runtime, they will be included as part of the debugger. So they will actually show you some, uh, give you some informative information. Okay, empty name list. So we say names dot is empty. So you should look at what is empty means uh, in the array class. So if I just simply go there, open a new tab, go to the array class, and go to the feature search uh, box. If you type is empty here, you can see that it's checking to see if the structure, which is array, is it actually empty, okay? So now sim uh, similarly, we can say empty uh, record list, and we're going to say records dot is empty. Okay, so these are the two implementations attributes we have for the uh, book class. Okay, so I'm going to put this at the bottom. So you want to put commands and queries and then the implementation attributes. Okay, so now what can be the pot? What are the possible? Let's say do commands first. Commands will be state changing. Okay, and then we'll do queries. Again, this feature tag. You can have as many of them as possible. So each one of them is simply a section bookmark. If I say compile, you can see from the features uh, panel here, I have constructor, which corresponds to this feature section here. And I have the commands, which uh, corresponds to this section of commands. And I have queries here, and I have implementation here. So it's a good practice for you to have the meaningful 
uh, groupings for all your features into commands, queries, or implementation or attributes to the extent that you're satisfied. Okay, for the commands, so we're going to have add, we're going to add something into the uh, uh, record, uh, into the so add something, uh, add the uh, name and the associated record into the uh, book. So let's put a signature first. So add is a command, so it would not take any uh, return time. So there should be no colon here. So for the add, we're going to add some name, which is of type string, and then it's going to take a record, let me say R, and now record is of type any, because record can be anything. Okay, so now, so we're going to say add a record of n So maybe a, a pair would be better because a pair consists of a name and a record. A pair of name associated name and associated with record R. Okay, let me just indent that properly. Okay, now make sure it compiles. So we'll do the same for remove. Let me just make sure it is really removed that uh, I said in the question sheet. Okay, so now we'd say we have add. Yes, we have remove. Okay, that's good. So now, in this case, because I said before, remove is uh, because the book is actually indexed by the list of names of the people. And that when I say index, that means we can assume the names are unique. They do not repeat. They do, uh, there are no duplicates of names. So, so that means each name in the book has only, um, if you give a, an existing name to query the book, there will be a unique record return. Okay, so in this case, we do not have to say the record. Okay, so we can simply say we want to remove this person's record. Well, we want to re remove this person's name and their associated record from the book. That's basically what we're trying to do. So you should know why in the case of the add, we have to give both name and the record. And in the case of remove, we only need to pass the name. Okay, you should know why this is the case. It's very important. It's about how you design your interface. Okay, so remove a pair of name and, and their associated record. Okay, that's a, mean, that's a reasonable, let me just make it full screen. Uh, there's a reasonable uh, comments there. Okay, so we have add and we have remove. Okay, that's good. So now let's say we have our queries. I have that feature tag already, do I? Do I not? Okay, so now for our queries, so now we're going to have uh, several queries. So now we can first have a query called count. So this is a typical uh, feature for collections in iPhone. So we can now count will be integer. So this would be to return the number of name record pairs in current book, okay? And also we can, we, remember we have the uh, find and get, uh, what's, there might be more. Okay, so we have more, uh, has name, has record, find and get, okay? So let's say has name first, so has name, so, of course, we are trying to query if a particular name is actually in the book. So it's going to be boolean and do and. Okay, uh, does name n exist in current book? Okay, similarly, we have another query here that would actually do uh, has a uh, record. So here R for record of type any and also returns a boolean. Does record R exist in the current book? Okay, so now has name, has record, and now we're going to have the find and get. So find is going to find out, so this is going to return an array, a collection of uh, answer because we know that uh, 
multiple people in the book might, sh might actually happen to have the same record. For example, there might be more than one person who, were, who was born on a particular birthday, right? Uh, on a particular day as their birthday. So now we can say rs record, which is of type any, and then it's going to return the, uh, the list of people's uh, name who actually uh, have the same record, okay? Return the return names of the list of people who have equal records. Okay, so now we're going to have another one which is called get, and get is going to be a little bit uh, reversed. So we're going to get given a particular person's name. So we're going to get their um, we're going to get their uh, record. So in this case, it would not be a collection return type anymore because we know the book is indexed by the name. So that means each name would uniquely determine a uh, single record in the book if the name exists, of course. So here we can simply say any. So make sure you know why the signature of the find actually returns an array, but the uh, the return type of the get is a single value. Make sure you know this as well. It's also very important in terms of the interface design. Okay, return the associated record for uh, name n. Okay. Okay. So so far, make sure it compiles. Okay. So if you, if you see variable is not properly set, that means we actually have the voice safety issue again. So the first one is here, okay? So somehow it's complaining that if you say any, so that means it can possibly be void uh, by default. So any is actually a reference type. So this is different from the uh, primitive type like an integer, boolean, or real numbers. So in the case of integer, they always have a default value zero, which is non-void. For the type of Boolean, they always have to have the default value false, again, which is non-void. And for the real numbers, they also similarly, they have the uh, default value zero, which is non-void. However, for any other reference type, which is descending class of any, they have the default value void. So you have to explicitly assign them to non-void in order to satisfy the uh, void safety um, in order to satisfy the voice safety constraint. In this case, we want to, uh, for now, we can simply just assign this to be maybe, uh, because you want to get, you want to get uh, the name, uh, you want to get a record of some name, okay? So you can have different options. So we can simply say, we simply just assign temporarily the results to the first one in the records, okay? Because array is going to start with uh, the uh, index one, okay? So it should get rid of one of them. So here you have some alternative here, or you can say records dot lower. So the advantage of writing this as opposed to one is, in, because in IFO, the array indices are in, uh, flexible. They do not necessarily have to start with one. So just in case, if the records actually start with maybe two or three or four, so you can, the lower would just be the corresponding lower index, okay? But, so this assignment is only temporary to, to actually satisfy the voice safety check, but we later on we're going to change this to something that's correct. Maybe that would be your, your job to complete the implementation. Okay, so now the next thing to fix is to make sure the array return type is not void. So we can just initialize that to be empty. So we can say create result. Remember result keyword is reserved for the return value dot. So here we say make that empty. Okay, so now that's what we have. Okay, so now we have, as you can see from the groups uh, panel here, we have constructor here, a feature section we have command section here with add and remove, and we have query section with uh, count, has name, has record, find, and get. And we also have implementation here uh, with the attributes. I want to show you one thing. You can see here in the features uh, panel here, 
if you want to show the signature of the features, you can actually go to uh, show the uh, signature. So here, if you click on show signature here, you can see that now you have the uh, return type for the values uh, for the queries. You also, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a val valuable thing to see if you want to see the uh, return type for the queries. Okay, so now we say compile, and now we can start writing test cases. Uh, maybe before that, we should write some contracts. Uh, it's always good practice for, as, uh, as far as DBC is concerned. You should always try to write contracts before you write a code. Okay, so now, if so what should be the pre and post conditions for the, uh, for the add command? Because we don't want to have any duplicates in the book. So it should be the client's responsibility or obligations to make sure the name they are trying to add does not exist yet. So here, that's why it is important for us to have some some uh, some useful queries for the class. That's why I actually introduced the query to say has name here to actually check to see if the name actually exists in the uh, in the uh, uh, the book. Okay. So here we can say has name and then n. Okay. If this actually failed, then so this is actually on the one hand, this is actually the uh, obligation of the clients of the book class, but this is also the benefits of the supplier who, who is going to write the code here for the ad, because now they can simply assume the name I'm going to handle in my code implementation body does not exist yet in the uh, book, so I would not have to worry about that. There would be no duplicates for the names. Okay, so what I can do now is to make sure so uh, ensure okay so we want to make sure the name we are trying to add does not exist in the book before we execute the feature of add but afterwards we would expect that has name would be true right so this here should be not of course so we want to say it is not the case that has name returns true before the ad was called, but after ad was called, then has name should return true. Okay, that's uh, one pre. Uh, okay, so we want to have a meaningful tag for that. We can say uh, none existing name. Okay, here we can say. Okay, so here we can say existing name. Okay, and also we can say uh, size. We can say book size incremented. So this is going to make sure the size of the book, which is of the count query here. Remember, we have a count query here. So we would say count is equal to count plus one. Okay. And what else can we actually say for? So remember, this ensure here would be the obligation of the supplier of the add feature because whatever the supplier put over here as the implementation code body must satisfy uh, what's specified in the post condition. So the post condition here will be the benefits for the client. So we as a client, we must make sure this part is as complete as possible. Okay. And we should say things like book size incremented, and we want to make sure the record associated with n would be really r, the r that we specify, right? Okay, so now we would say associated record. So here we can say to get the record of the name. That's why we also have the game query here, get query here, right? So we can say get. And then here we can say get a because we here already say the uh, name already exists, but we also want to make sure the associated record for that existing name is really R that we're trying to add in, right? It's equal to R, okay? Okay, this compiles. So so this should be reasonable for the add uh, feature. So we, we're trying to say given that the name did not exist before. After we have executed the body of implementation for add, 
we're going to we are going to receive the following services for the clients. First, the name the name would exist, and also the record R as the arguments would now become the associated record for that newly added name, and also the size of the uh, count would be incremented. Okay, so now what else? Okay, yeah. So you can also also uh, put the uh, contracts for the names and records if you like. So for example, you can say names added. So here you can say uh, names dot count. So this will be the size of the array implementation here, right? So here we'll say names dot count equals to O names dot count plus one. Okay, and here you would say uh, also records added. So records dot count is equal to old records dot count plus one. Okay, that's one thing you can do. And now we can write invariants here to make sure our implementation is always consistent with our public queries. Okay, so we want to say, remember we have a query called count. So this count returns the current number of elements in the book. So that should correspond to the size of the names and records, both of them. So we can say consistent sizes. So we can say count should be equal to names dot count and we'll just make a conjunction here okay so here we can say count is equal to records dot count okay so this is this is really something invariant you have to be able to write yourself okay I'm just giving you some example okay so now we have basically a very fairly complete contracts for the add feature Okay, well, we haven't got any implementation yet. We'll do, we'll I'll leave that to you. Okay, okay. So now for the remove feature, it will be very similar as well. So I'm just showing you one example of writing the contracts for add. So now I'm going to just write a uh, test cases for this and show you the point I want to show you uh, for this tutorial video. It would be your, your responsibility to finish all the contracts and implementation for the rest. Okay, so. Now, let me go and create a new class for the testing purpose, okay? So now let's, uh, let's do a new class. Over there, I would say, uh, okay, right click on tests and say new class. And here we'd say test book. And the parent class should be ES test. Okay, let's say creates, and then it's going to compile. Okay, and if you open a new tab, just put the book here, just make it handy. Okay, so now we're going to say create, make, to say we're going to use the make as the constructor. Okay, so now we have the make feature here. Okay, so now so feature, we're going to have different uh, queries for tests. Okay, let's say we're going to let's say uh, test, let's say test uh, basic functions. Okay, I'm going to write one for uh, for you, but you're going to you are supposed to write many more test cases for your exercise. Okay, it's going to be a boolean query here, and as always, we have to put the comments to make sure we always have the results reflected back to the uh, testing report. So now we say T1, you no know, test uh, basic functions of a book. Okay, and also test basic functions of a book. Okay, so now we're going to play with a business object of type book. So now we can say uh, let's say we just have a book, okay? It's basically a book, okay? Book of anything, 
okay so now we go uh, and then before I start uh, before I continue with developing the test case we can always add a boolean case right let me compile first okay yes test add boolean case and here I'm going to say agents and then test basic functions okay make sure it compiles and then I will go to the root class go to application and change this to ES suite and then I will delete the generated two lines and then I would say now add oh, I'm compile first before the code completion can take, take effect add test case and then I would say create an anonymous objects of type remember this is curly braces not parenthesis this is curly braces okay I'm going to put test book dot make okay and then after that I have to say show browser and then I have to say run eSpec okay and then I would say compile okay so now let me go to go back to the uh, test book okay so what features do we want to test first of all we're going to have uh, to first initialize an empty book okay so now we're going to create book dot make okay let me illustrate one point the reason that we can call the make feature in the context of this creation clause is because we have in the book class declare the make under this create clause so we are declaring that the make feature can be can be used can be used positive it can be used for initializing the objects of book let's say if we comment this out if you select this section control k and you try to compile you're going to have the uh, compile time error because if you go to this one creation instruction uses call to improper feature so this is to say if you it brings you to here it's telling you that you're trying to actually use the make feature to initialize the empty book however the make feature was not declared under the create clause in your book class okay always remember why this is why it is necessary to have a create clause here this is unique to iPhone very different from Java you really have to know this okay recompile okay it compiles okay test book again so after this we should assign the result to be book dot count is equal to zero okay okay this is one thing okay so now one thing I would like to draw your attention to is so now if you see so this is one possible post condition we can write however if you say book dot names and dot count is equal to zero would this compile okay this actually compiles but is it really good that this is the case remember names if we simply so if you want to go go to where names uh, are declared control right click control right click okay so now you can see that these two attributes are actually implementation so they should have been hidden as secrets from the supplier side so this is the essence of information hiding because as I mentioned before the names and records they might be subject to changes to different implementation mechanism remember I mentioned in the notes that it's uh, there are at least for possible implementations for names, the, the names and the names and records, right? So now let's say if somehow if you change from names the record, the type from array to linked list, or from linked list to array, or from linked list, uh, or from ha hash table to maybe uh, like a record type, then in this case, whatever you have here uh, would not actually work anymore in the client class. You should really try this out yourself to convince what I'm trying to say. Okay. Now, 
so let me okay let me illustrate this very quickly for you okay let's say somehow if you want to so then you know that it's actually an array from the client side so what can be the possible feature you can call that's specific to array let me try to find one thing for you for example you might say uh, somehow you want to do okay how about this we can say and also name start lower is equal to one for example I want to say the lower index for the names array in the book class is actually one okay what happens if now I change the implementation let's say I change the names from array to link list okay if I do that we actually got compile time error okay the first error is actually because now the names actually do not have to make empty anymore in the make class this is okay this is suppliers code that's secret anyway so for this one we can simply just change that okay just make that's fine however if we recompile we still have one error however this error actually goes to the side of the clients of the book class if we go there you can see because the clients previously depended on the fact that the supplier use a an array to implement the set of names so that's why the clients could actually call the lower feature which is available in the array class but not in the link list class however because we said you have more than one possible implementation mechanisms for the book so if the supplier happens to change the mechanism for implementing the names and records for example from array to link list in this case because those two attributes were not hidden from the uh, client which means we actually broke the information hiding principle before so if this change has occurred is it is going to affect the clients which means the clients code uh, doesn't compile anymore this will upset them very much so that's why I said information hiding is important okay make sure you follow what I, what I have tried to say why the previous uh, setting actually violated the uh, information hiding principle how do we fix that first of all let me just change this back to array and then if I do the following of course this has to be make empty as well okay what we want to do is to make sure the clients can have no access to the implementation secrets the way to do this as I mentioned in the class is to export this feature to none so this means none of the uh, potential clients classes can actually access these two attributes if we now we try to compile so that means if the clients was attempting to uh, uh, was if you see the error message here it says feature of qualified call is not available to client class if you just read the error message yourself here you would see that the uh, feature names was actually declared as exported to none in the book class so that means it is not exported to the test book class so in this class it's a client of the book it has no access to this name so this line would not be available uh, would not be allowed in the first place okay so this is really the advantage of information hiding okay so let me just write a note for you information hiding secret implementation okay make sure you really get this point a hundred percent okay okay so now we have check the initial condition for the book let's say we try to add some records into the uh, book okay okay so let's say we try to say uh, add some book so let's say we try to add some birthday into it so in order to do birthday let's say we try to add a, uh, we want to use the uh, class dates for the time library so we're going to go to projects project settings and go to libraries right click add library and then time go uh, click on time okay and then say okay okay let's compile this will make the date class available to us so let's say we have birthday here dates okay 
So we have maybe uh, let me spend uh, spell that out. Birthday. Actually, birthday. I need to have one, two birthdays. I birthday one, birthday two. Okay, and then we also have address one, address two. Simply just make a string, okay, for address. Okay, so now what we can do is to add records and people, people, uh, people record pairs into the uh, book. So now we can say book dot add. So now we need to pass the name. Let's say, for example, we can say Jim, and he has the birthday. Okay, let's say create Jim's birthday. So create uh, bd one dot make so we need to specify some year so let's say 19 uh, for example 70 so let's say uh, March 21st for example okay and we're going to add birthday one as Jim's birthday into the book okay so now you gotta of course at the runtime <coughs> the Eiffel runtime is going to check if the precondition is satisfied to make sure Jin at the moment at this point does not exist in the book yet, which is true because the book is empty. But afterwards, Jin should exist in the book to make so you have to make sure your post your body implementation can satisfy the post condition. Okay, so now let me do one more. So what you can do is you can say result is equal to book dot count equals one okay and let me organize that better so book count equals one and book dot has name uh, of course Jim and book dot get if, you, if I want to get a record for Jim so I should get something that's object equal to okay object equal to BD1 for example Okay, so you should really know what the uh, tilde means, as we, as we mentioned in the tutorials and also in the previous tutorial, also in the lecture. Okay, so you can also try this, but it, this the uh, the potential danger is, but if this BD uh, BD one is not exactly the one that you added, it's not exactly the same objects that you added to the uh, book. However, it has the same year, has the same month, and has the same date, but it should be still considered as the same date. So that's why we're using object equality as opposed to reference equality. Make sure you get this point. It's very important to know as well. Okay, let me get one more. Okay, you can also say and book dot find to so find out everyone, uh, all the people who actually was born on uh, that particular birthday. Okay, let's say that should be an array. So that's why we can say the count should be exactly just one okay and now I want to say that array has just Jim okay make sure you understand what this test case is trying to test okay so now that would be uh, for the birthday so let me just try to do one more because the record can be anything so I can say creates BD, uh, so create address. I think for this example, maybe I don't need BD2. Okay, I just need uh, one address and one birthday. That should be sufficient. Okay, so now I would say, let me delete that address. And of course, I have to fix the name appropriately. And here, okay, so now I can say create address dot make uh, because it's a string so I can say make from string dot make from string okay so now for example I can simply say York University okay so now I can say uh, book dot add so for example here we can say uh, let's say <clears throat> Jackie and here we can actually put the address for Jackie 
Okay, compile. Okay, uh, we might have some known. Okay, so always make sure when you rename, you have to change the names accordingly. And uh, also check that. Okay, so now, first of all, so this compiles, which allows records to be of types uh, uh, dates and string. Why? Okay, that's something for you to think about because remember, now so far we actually got, we actually called the command add twice. The first time we were trying to add bd, which is of type dates. And the second time we call the add feature uh, command here, we, we're trying to add address, which is of type string. But why? Okay, make sure you understand why. The reason is because in the book, we actually are using the any type to actually represent the uh, type for record. That's why we can allow the book to store uh, different kinds of records. Okay, so now let me put some comments for you. Up to now, we illustrated that uh, storage is flexible. Okay, okay, make sure you really know what I mean here. So we can store any types of record into into the uh, into the book, even though the, uh, and they don't have to be consistent. That means we don't we are not saying we are only going to have a book of address only or a book of birthday only. We're going to say we have a book of anything. Okay. So now we're going to demonstrate some retrieval uh, uh, retrieval uh, mechanism uh, for the book, and then to illustrate the point. Okay. So now. Uh, here, actually, we have Jim already, so I think uh, maybe it would be the best if I do the following. Okay, so now, if I say, let me just move the test case a little bit. Okay, so now, uh, if I do, let me just uh, please remove uh, these two just to uh, a later test case because I think uh, the belong to uh, different points that I want to illustrate. Okay, so up to now we actually have Jim and we also have Jackie in the uh, birthday book, right? Okay, if I do the same, if I say result is assigned to be the book dot count, so now it should be equal to two, okay? And now we want to say book dot has name, of course, we have Jackie now, and we also have Jim, of course. And book dot find and bd uh, here we want to say address dot count equals one. Okay. And so here, let me just put this back. I think it is really what I meant to do. Okay. And we also want to say the find feature here has the gym and here we have and book dot find address dot has Jackie okay that's good so now let me illustrate the next point so up to now we have illustrated that the storage is flexible for our design of the book so now let's do the following if I do result is assigned to be Book dot get Jim is actually uh, equal to uh, birthday. So now we want to say because we know it's going to be a birthday, right? So of course, uh, this is one thing we can say. But now we want to say the following because it's actually a date. It's actually a a, a date type. Okay. So now we want to actually call some feature that's specific to the birthday because we know the associated record with Jim in the book should be a date because we just add, add a BD into the Jim, uh, into, uh, with Jim into the book, right? Okay, because of this add feature here. So let's have a look. If we look at a date class 
And if you look at it, what are the features available there? So now we can say somehow, let's say just for illustration, somehow we want to change the birthday for Jim. Okay. Once we get this birthday here, we can say make now because we are expecting this to be a birthday, right? For Jim to be a date. So now in the date clause, we do have a feature called make now. So if we call this make now on that particular birthday, we essentially change Jim's birthday from whatever his original birthday is into now. Okay, this may not make a real sense, but I'm just want to illustrate the point because we want to apply some feature that would be available to the type that we think what uh, what this type is. This type should be a dates. Okay, okay, I want to do that. Uh, we don't have to say result because it's a command call. Okay, so if we say compile, okay, so now. Let me say why again. So we would expect this line to compile. However, it did not. Why would we expect it to, comp to compile? Because book.get Jim should return the uh, birthday that we added to Jim, like a BD. So we, because BD is of type dates. In the date class, we do have a feature called make now. Okay, so that's why I we would think that this line should be okay. Let's see what happened in the error message. Unknown identifier make now. If we expand it, it actually says that unknown identifier make sure that identifier if needed is the final name of the feature of the class or local entity of formal arguments of routine. Okay, this is okay. But now, now have a look at here. This is the most important thing. The target type, so we are looking at this feature call, this is a call to the feature make now, and this part is called the targets of this feature call. It is saying the target type, which is this expression here, is actually any rather than dates. So we were expecting this type to be a dates rather than any. So the reason that the iPhone compiler is, com is considering this type to be an any type rather than the date type is because iPhone compiler can only infer the static type, which means you can only in infer on the basis of the de uh, de uh, the declare types in your class. So if you go to book, if you look at the uh, find over here, uh, go to get over here, you can see the return type of any is actually any. If the return type is actually any, it is not dates because from the supplier's point of view, we actually don't know what is going to be the type of the record? We simply know it's just anything, right? So now that's why from the supplier's point of view, it's simply any. Although from the client side, that we are sure that this return type should be dates, but the iPhone compiler is not intelligent enough to figure this out. So what we should do is to say, is to tell the compiler to say, trust us, we believe this is actually a date type but we have to explicitly tell the compiler to trust us. The way to do this is to do a cast. Okay, the way to do this is in Eiffel syntax, you to say, let me write it out first and now explain. If attached, so we expect that to be a date type, and then we expect this expression here specifically of a date type, and we'd say if it is the case, then we'll do the cast, and cast that to be uh, a birthday of Jim. And then in there, birthday of Jim. Okay, this compiles. To actually explain this syntax, because this syntax, you are supposed to know this syntax. You're supposed to learn that. It might be beneficial, uh, might be easier for, me, for you to learn this syntax by considering What's the equivalent Java code for that? Okay, let me just sketch the equivalent Java code for you. Okay, equivalent Java code. Okay, it is something like uh, if so. The attach here is more like instance of operator in Java. If this expression here is an instance of the date class then we will do some casting, 
Okay, then we would say the birthday birthday of Jim should be assigned to be, and then we do it as an explicit cast. And remember the cast operator in IFO is different from the cast operator in uh, Java. In Java, it's a round parenthesis, but in IFO, this is a curly braces. Don't get confused. So now in IFO, we would say dates, and then we'll cast this expression into that, right? And then we would say BD of Jim, and then we'd say dot uh, make now. So this fragment of code here in IFO is equivalent to this fragment of code in Java. So basically, basically this this expression here up to now, the one I highlights, I'm highlighting is equivalent to the instance of check, okay? And the S, BD of Jim here is equivalent to this assignment here. So here the BD of Jim is some new local variable that we introduce that will, it's, and the scope of this local variable is only within the if then else uh, branch here. So if you try to use the BD of Jim outside this if, if then then uh, statements, it would not be okay. Okay, so now you can see that in the Java code, uh, once we have done the, so basically this is the instance of uh, test in the Java code, and this part is to say if the cast uh, uh, succeeded, succeed, then we will do the explicit cast. And then after we have done the cast, then we can do the uh, uh, feature, uh, the method call in Java. In IFO, this whole expression is actually a Boolean expression because you can see this whole thing is actually a value that we pass to the if then else statements in IFO. So this is to say if the instance of check succeeds and also the cast that we are trying to do also exit, uh, also succeed, then in IFO this whole thing will be true. If either the instance of fails or the cast actually fails, then in IFO, this expression will be false. Okay, so you can see what I mean, right? Okay, so now let me just put this into comments for you. So uh, later on, you can actually also refer to that, but still we have to make sure this actually uh, compiles. Okay, so up to now, we have seen that. Okay, so up to now, we illustrated that Retrieval is error prone because manual on systematic casts are needed. So basically, every time you can see that every time if you're trying to retrieve uh, something from a collection of any or in this case, the book of any, then you were, you really have to cast, explicitly cast this, op, uh, this expression here into the type of objects that you think that should be true, right? You have to do this for every retrieval. So this will be very error prone from the client's point of view and very inconvenient. And this is due to, and the reason that the retrieval is so ugly is due to the fact that the uh, storage is flexible because we actually allowed any type of items to be added into the book. It can be uh, dates or it can be an address. So that's why when we are retrieving objects from the book, the compiler, I have a compiler cannot tell at the compiler time what should be the actual type of your of the object that you're trying to retrieve from the book. It can be a date, it can be a address, or it can be anything because anything can be stored into the book. So we as the clients, we have to explicitly tell the compiler that trust us, this is the type that we believe these, this objects, uh, this objects uh, is bound to. However, this cast operation is ugly and may not, be, uh, may not always succeed because maybe your guess was false. I thought this return type of gym should be dates, but maybe I, re uh, maybe I just made a mistake, maybe what I, Add if a gym was actually an address rather than birthday, it's possible. So that's why I said this is actually the main, 
disadvantages, the main disadvantage for this particular design, okay, which is although the storage is actually flexible because we can actually have so many, we can have so many uh, possible data collect, uh, data, uh, data types, uh, so many types of data that can be stored in the book. But when we are trying to retrieve that from the client's point of view, the clients have to explicitly write cast operation, which is uh, really, which is really polluting their code. And also, let's say if somehow they got the uh, the cast wrong, then it's really useless to them, uh, useless to the clients. Okay. So now, this is basically answering the question for the first one. What's really the disadvantage for the above design? What are the possible runtime errors that can be caused by this design? And the runtime errors would be, let's say if somehow you're trying to, for example, let's say, let's say if you're trying to, uh, actually I can just illustrate this and then you can actually try it out yourself. So this BD of Jim make now, so the runtime error can be, if this cast operation does not succeed, then we cannot use this local variable to do what we want to do. So that's actually something we cannot do at runtime, right? So that's really the main disadvantage for this design. Okay, so now, how can you improve it? Oh, by the way, so here I said, apparently there are many ways to implement the functionality of a book. How do you apply the principle of information hiding such that when you switch the implementation from one to another, the clients of book will not be affected? I already illustrated this point. The answer to this is if you go back to the book, so you should actually make sure you export the uh, implementation attributes to none so that the clients have no access to your implementation secrets. Okay, so now back to the original question here. So now how can you improve it, improve the bad design? Okay, so now let's have a look at the uh, book class. Okay, of course we haven't finished the contracts and implementation yet. They will be your responsibility to finish this exercise for the contracts and implementation first. Okay, but now I'm going to show you how you can improve your design. Let's have a look at the uh, the the book class. This is the book of any, and recall my notes about generic parameter. What should be the uh, points of uh, what should be the usage triggers for the gene generic class? Let me just retrieve my notes for you. So let me go to and let me just go to generic parameters. And uh, so here I actually mentioned two usages, uh, usage triggers for using generic parameters. Okay, let me just repeat that again. So you should use generic parameter for the class when the supported features of your class are concerned about how uh, are concerned about how the stored data should be put together. In this case, we are trying to only just put a collection of records and people. That's all we care. And we just want to put the records together, okay? And let's say in the case of a stack, we want to put the data together in a, in a last in first out way. And in the case of queue, we want to put it in a first in first out way. And in this book, it's simply simple. We just want to put the records together, okay? So we don't actually care about individual data elements. So the second point when you want to use the uh, generic parameter is the type of individual data items is ir irrelevant as far as the shape of the collection is concerned, which means now it doesn't really matter what data we put into the book. The, the shape of the book is simple. It's simply a collection of pairs that are actually indexed by the names. How, uh, what data you actually put into the book. For example, you put into address, you put into uh, birthday, you put into phone numbers. It, w it will not change the way we, we organize the books. The book is always indexed by names. So always remember these, if you actually satisfy these two uh, criteria, that means you should really consider using the uh, uh, generic parameter for your class. Okay, so that means this type here is actually any. So the idea about generic parameter is we want the clients when they actually, let me show you the intuition for the fix. If you go to a test book here, 
So now when the clients uh, declare the book object, they actually simply say, I want to create a book. But they, they didn't commit to say, I want a book of what? I, do I want a book of address addresses? Do I want a book of birthdays? Or do I just want a book of phone numbers? But here, by just declaring that to be a book, we allow too much flexibility for the clients because the client can add address into the uh, book and they can also add birthday into the book. Okay, so that will make the retrieval of the uh, book too, uh, too much uh, inflexible, you know, too, too much uh, ugly. Because in that case, as I explained already, in the uh, code for retrieving the uh, items out of the book, you actually have to do explicit cast for each of the retrieval. Okay, this is really polluting the code for the clients. And there's no guarantee that you're always doing the right cast. That's really even worse, right? So the intuition is we want the clients to actually commit at the point of declaration to say what kind of book they actually want to uh they actually want to store. Which means if somehow the client says, I want to have a book of addresses, then this book should not be allowed to store any objects that are not of type addresses. Okay, so we should no longer allow uh, a book with more than one data types for the uh, items stored there. Okay, that's the intuition. How do we do that? So we can use generic parameter construct in uh, supporting iPhone. It's, this is also supported in uh, Java. Okay, let's do it in iPhone way. So now go to book cluster, right click, new class, and now we'll say generic book. I cannot use book anymore because book name is already taken. So let's just call it generic book. Okay, now the idea is we have to parameterize. The way to parameterize your book is by using square brackets. And here we can use any name that is not already used as a, as a class name. For example, you cannot say book here because book is already used for one of the classes. You cannot say application either because application is already used. To be a parameter is like to use a new variable. Whenever you declare a new variable, you want to make sure that variable is not already used by other variables, right? So all the variables for the class names cannot be used for the names of generic parameter. So we can say G, for example, is a typical name for generic parameter. Or we can say record here because record has not been used as a name for a class name. Okay, let's just call it G. Okay, just to follow the Eiffel convention here. And you uh, and the rest will be as simple as we simple we simply just let me go to the uh, book class. We'll just have to replace all the occurrences of the uh, any by G. That's all we have to do. So if we go to generic book, and then let's paste that. Okay. So now, this first of all, let's fix the attributes. So now, the names will always be just indexed by strings. So this one will not change. It's really about any that has to be changed. So basically, we will be replacing every occurrence of any by the parameter to the class G. So later on, when the client instantiates this G to be some known type, for example, address or birthday, then uh, all the uh, all the use of all the usage of G's in this generic class will also be replaced by that type accordingly. Okay, so we're going to replace every occurrence of any by G. So now, remember, array class is also a generic class. So we now we are trying to say now array class, please just use whatever G that 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 will be instantiated by the clients of the generic book. Okay, so now we replace this one already. So if you have a look at the uh, make feature here, so this one doesn't uh, would not require any changes because we still want to create empty arrays. And now for the add feature, we have to change this to be from any to G. And if you go to remove, uh, it's going to remove a name. Name doesn't change, that's fine. Count will be okay. Has name, still a string, but now has record. Now G has record that any 
So G here again corresponds to whatever that will be instantiated by the clients of generic book. Okay, so now we can go to uh, okay has name has record and find. So here we want to find a particular record. So now it'd be G get okay and now let's go to okay let's see if this compiles okay let's see why it doesn't compile let's have a look so now okay sorry i forget so this should be g as well right because this should be a record type which can be which is parameterized by g here it should basically we're trying to we're declaring a new variable g as the type for all the uh for all the records in the book so that's why uh, the record type has to be G accordingly uh, in the rest of the code for the gene generic book class. Okay, compile. This compiles okay. So now let me illustrate the advantages for this generic book uh, by writing another test case. Okay, so now. Okay, let me uh, just write more one, one more comments for you. If you simply just do the following code will line of code will not compile without cast, right? So this is a line of code that I illustrated before that wouldn't compile. So I'm just putting that back for you, but I'm going to comment that out, of course. Okay, however, if you comment that back, it wouldn't compile because of the reason I said before. Okay, okay, compile. So now I'm going to write another test case. So test generic uh, book, and that'll be a Boolean query. And now I'm going to say, Test basic functions of generic book. Okay. And this will be test two. So always try to write the comments here. Test two. Test basic functions of generic book. I'm actually going to save some time on typing by copy and pasting the uh, uh, code here, but I will actually do the modification accordingly, of course. Okay, so now, so now we are basically considering a generic book. Okay, let me just copy the decoration as well. So now I would say local here. Okay, local. So now, because we have a generic book, so that's something we want to test. So now. Let me uh, just comment the rest and show you one line at a time. Okay, okay. So now we only got up to here. So now let's try to compile. Okay. So now we have an error here. It says type has wrong number of actual generic parameters. If you expand this, it's going to say you actually declare something called generic book of G, but you're only giving a generic book. This is uh, the reason. The reason is somehow. You're trying to use this class without telling us, without telling the supplier how to instantiate the G here so that uh, the feature, for example, this one would know actually what kind of record they are trying to add into the uh, book, right? So if you are clients, your obligation of using this generic book is to, is to actually give some known class as the type for all the members in the book, okay? So that's the first error that's very common. So you want to make sure you must instantiate the G here. So basically, instantiate G by, for example, we can say now we are storing a birthday book, okay, by dates. Okay, this is from client side, and this compiles good. Okay, let's see this part of the uh, tests would still compile because we're only creating an empty book. Let's double check it compiles, good. So now let's do this. So now we say create some birthday for Jim as well uh, as before. So now this should compile, okay? 
now. Okay, it seems like may have to. Let me see. Okay, good. Yeah. So now let's try to do what we tried to do before. So now we are trying to add uh, this into the book. We are trying to add Jackie's address to the book into a birthday book, basically. Okay. Would it compile? This does not compile. You see. This is the crucial difference, the first crucial difference of using generic parameter. So now we no longer have any flexibility of the storage because the, the client has already, already committed the type of the record to be a date. So you can only add dates into the, uh, the book. Okay? So, okay, so we should say the following at does not compile. Okay, let's make sure we um okay, that's good. Does not compile why? You should know. The reason is because now because in the decoration of this generic book of this uh, local variable here, we the client we as a client we have already committed to that the fact that the, uh, the generic book will only store dates, stores dates only. Anything else that's incompatible with dates would not be allowed. Okay? So now, that's why this line of code would not compile. If you actually look at the error message there, it's exactly what I said. So let's expand this error message here, and you should also read it my, yourself as well. So basically, the idea is, if I expand this further, so the formal argument type is dates. The formal argument type refers to the dates over here. This is where the clients instantiates the gene. However, the actual type is string. So the actual type refers to the type of the objects, which is address that we are trying to add into the book, right? This is the actual type, right? So that's why this is not allowed. Up to now, we illustrated that the storage is uh, controlled. Okay, it's controlled in the sense that you can only store one kind of object, one consistent kind of objects in the class, in the generic book class. Okay, let me just uncomment this, and then I would say in that only one consistent kind of uh, records can be stored in the book. Okay, the kind uh, is committed at when the clients declares the local variable uh, book, right? Okay, I try to be as thorough as possible, but you should really be able to reproduce this yourself. Okay, let's try another thing that we used to try before. So now, this line of code would not compile without an explicit cast, right? Because from the previous bad design, we have a book of any. So the return type of the book from the book class, if you recall, the get featured here is actually of type any, right? That's why the iPhone compiler cannot tell if this is really of type dates. So that's why you really have to do some explicit cast, as I show uh, uh, about 15 minutes ago or some, uh, somehow. Okay, or some 15 minutes ago. Okay, so now what we should do is try to see if this will compile in the case of the generic parameter design. If we say compile, and this compiles, how come? How would the compiler be so smart to actually know this return type here is actually can actually has the feature make now available because make now is only available in the date class. Why? Okay, let's have a look at the generic book because remember the book is declared as generic book type. If you go to generic book, if you see over there, you can see that the uh, the get feature there returns G. So this is from the supplier's side. 
the type is G. However, remember when we actually, when the clients declare this line of code, it says it should be a generic book of dates. This essentially instantiates this G here to be dates and also replace every occurrence of the G in the class, in the rest of the text. And for example, here you can see the G here would be replaced by dates. So the Eiffel compiler would be able to know that for this particular entity of book, uh, the book.get should really return a date rather than any, right? So that's why you can see what used to, okay, what used to be, what we used to be able to compile for the storage in the bad design can now be compiled uh, in the good design of generic parameter. And what we used to not to be able to compile without a, an explicit cast in the bad design can now be compiled in the good design. Okay, so please make sure you really understand these two crucial differences between the good and bad design. In the good design, we actually have a book of any. Okay, a book of any. So you can see the any type anywhere. And the class was not parameter, parameter, parameterized by the type of the records. On the other hand, in the better design, we actually have a generic book that is parameterized by the G parameter. And uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the places where we used to have any is now replaced by G. So this makes, this actually adds some burden, just one small burden to the clients. This will force the clients for the good design to actually commit to themselves what uh, type of records you want to store in your generic book. So in this case, it would be dates. So that's why this will make the uh, storage of the uh, into the generic book less flexible because if you're trying to add anything that's other than dates, which is the type that the, the client has already committed, then this would not pass the check for the compiler. The compiler would now be able to tell such error. And on the other hand, so now the uh, retrieval from the book will be more flexible because now whenever we actually get some record back from the book, we actually don't have to do an explicit cast to the type that we think the book is storing because the client has already committed to the compiler that we are only going to store the dates into it. And the uh, compiler does forbid any, put, uh, any attempt to store anything that's other than dates. So that's so that's why we have the guarantee. Anything that's returned from the book will be of type dates. That's why we can call some feature that's specific to the date class. Okay, so up to now, we have actually uh, thoroughly explained the bad design and the good design by using two test cases uh, here. And of course, all the test cases wouldn't pass for now because I haven't put any implementation and contracts into the uh, uh, into the feature. So now, for your job, please make sure you read, uh, watch this video, and take notes thoroughly, and make sure you understand exactly the two crucial differences between the uh, good design and bad design, and go over this notes here and think about the answer for the questions for these. Uh, three questions here for this particular exercise. I have already mentioned all the answers in my video, in this current video, okay? And once you have understood the issue completely, now you can start developing your code. Your coding tasks would be first, complete the contracts, because I already give you one example of the add feature. So now complete all the contracts for the rest of the uh, features in the uh, book class and then go to the generic book class and, and complete all the contracts there as well. And then now go to the uh, book class and complete all the uh, implementation for all the features. Okay, contracts first and then the implementation. Once you have completed the implementation for the book, go ahead to complete the implementations for your, uh, maybe before you start uh, completing the implementation for the uh, uh, generic book class, run the tests to make sure this particular test actually pass. Okay, let me also add it for you. So add boolean test case. 
agent test generic book. So we have two test cases now. So basically, once you have completed the implementation for the book class, make sure you actually pass this case first because the implementation for the book will be kind of similar to the code body you will have to put for the generic book. The crucial difference again is about the use of generic parameter for the type. Okay, but the implementation itself will be similar. Okay, once you actually pass this test here and go ahead to apply the similar implementation with some possible adaptation, adaptation to the uh, types. Okay, so now once you have done this and now go ahead to complete the implementation for the generic book and then make sure eventually you get a green bar. Okay, so a very quick recap for you for this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're trying to show you two different designs for uh, two different designs for a collection of records, people and record pairs. And we show you two designs. The bad design is we simply have a collection of any objects. In the good design, we parameterize the, uh, the book class by a type variable, which is G. And the G is actually used throughout the text of the uh, generic book class. And uh, from the client's point of view, the generic class is actually much easier to use. In this, uh, you should really consider the case. Uh, you should really consider from two cases. One is for storage. The other one is for retrieval. In, as far as the storage is concerned, the bad design, which is uh, a collect uh, as a book of objects, for the storage is very flexible because you can have a book of birthday, you can have a bir uh, book of addresses, etc. However, in, on, the, on the other hand, for the case of generic book, because the client has to commit to what type the uh, records are at a point of decoration. So in the case of the generic class, the storage is much less flexible. You can only store one kind of record into the book. Okay, now the second angle to consider these two designs is through the uh, retrieval point of view. When you're trying to retrieve a record from the bad design, which means a book of any, then in that case, if you think that record is really of a particular type, for example, that record should be a date rather than an address. In that case, you have in the bad design, if you are a client of the bad design, you have to explicitly do a cast to that object because the iPhone compiler cannot tell what uh, type the uh, uh, the item you're retrieving is okay so for the bad design if you are the clients of the bad design you have to do some explicit cast which will which is not guaranteed to be correct and also you will you will pollute your clients code okay and now on the other hand if you're trying to if you are you are the clients of the generic book the better design because you have to already commit it that you are using a generic book of dates then although the storage from the storage angle you are actually less flexible, but now in the from the retrieval's point of view, you are actually much more uh, uh, you, you are much more guaranteed in the sense that because you are trying to let's say if you're trying to re, uh, retrieve a record from the uh, generic book of dates, iPhone compiler can already tell that the objects there you, that you are trying to retrieve is actually of date type. So that's why once you retrieve that object. You don't actually have to do a cast before you can apply any feature that's specific to the date class. Okay, so those are the two angles you must master, uh, considering in terms of understanding these two designs. Okay, that would be the end of this tutorial for illustrating the advantages of generic parameter. Stay watching.